This is Apple's iPod commercial from 2004. And this is me attempting to recreate that commercial in my bedroom. And when I'm faced with the challenge, I fully commit. So I bought this 19-year-old iPod Classic to see if I can recreate this iconic commercial two decades later. Plus, I spent like $200 on this iPod, so I'm really looking for a reason to justify the purchase. All right, here's how this is going to go down. Oh my gosh, I just drew all over myself. Step one, I'll film a high quality choreographed routine featuring the iPod Classic. I've been training my whole life for this moment. Step two, I'll professionally edit that footage into the style of those original commercials. And step three, arguably the most important step, I'll premiere my commercial to my lovely wife to try and justify the $200 that I spent on this iPod Classic. What was I thinking, dude? This is crazy. Ultimately, the goal here is to see if my wife can... Get, what the frick? What are you doing? Don't dig up the hot ground. Come on, go. <laughs> Ultimately, the goal here is to see if my wife can tell the difference between the original Apple commercial and my masterpiece. Scatter, come on, get. Oh, wait a second. Where did these commercials even come from? Well, to find out, we have to rewind to the early 2000s, where Steve Jobs had recently returned to Apple as its CEO. And after the success of the iMac G3, the Apple team set their sights on revolutionizing the way people listen to music. Their solution? The iPod. Here's one of the prototypes that literally looks like a slab of cheese. Unveiled in October 2001, the iPod offered enough space for a whole lot of songs, as Jobs put it. A portable music library right in your pocket. And the release of the iPod was coupled with one of my favorite commercials of all time, featuring bangers like Jets, Are You Gonna Be My Girl? These commercials represented a huge shift in how technology could be marketed, bridging music and advertising in a way that had a massive impact on both industries. To the point that two decades later, I'm attempting to remake these classic commercials. Step one, the dance. This should come as no surprise, but I'm not really a dancer. I don't really know how to dance. But desperate times call for desperate... Wait, how, how, how's the saying go? <laughs> but desperate times call for desperate measures, and I'm stepping up to the plate. I should come clean though and let you know that I have tried this before, and I had, a, I had pretty good results. However, I think I can step it up a little. And to do that, I must tap into the film industry's most secretive visual effects tool. Me. Why would you do that to me? This is the worst thing I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. Ah, visual effects. I'm not gonna lie, I feel pretty self-conscious right now. I guess it's time to dance. This is so dumb. Okay. Can our neighbors see me? <laughs> so from my previous experience, I think I need to do the very distinctly big dance moves. So I want to make sure that the iPod stands out. Let's turn this up. This is what everything has been leading up to. It's probably at this moment you're wondering, why the heck is this guy doing this? Well, see, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with these Apple commercials. And to be honest, it was probably just the bright colors and loud copyrighted music. But nonetheless, Apple had lodged itself into my brain. And so I went out and bought some green material and got myself some free editing software to figure out how to make this commercial. But alas, I had no luck. So let's see if I can make little Zach's dreams come true and prove the iPod wasn't a complete waste. I got it, I got it. You can have your office back now. All right, step two, the edit. Call me Christopher Nolan because this commercial will be explosive. That was, uh, that was an Oppenheimer joke. Now, I'm not exactly sure how Apple or the agency that made this commercial made the commercial. <laughs> One could assume it was filmed on like a green screen or a blue screen, but I've spent the last few weeks trying to research this and I haven't found any information on how this was made. So I guess we'll just have to work it out for ourselves. I'm pretty optimistic though. There's three parts to this effect. You have the bold colored background, the silhouette of the person dancing, and of course the iPod classic and the white ear pods. Did they call them ear pods back then? Ah, you know what I'm talking about. And a key part to this effect is cutting out myself from the background. So I'm using this AI plugin called Keeper in Final Cut that does it automatically. So my plan is simple. I'll add in a colored background, then use an AI plugin to cut myself out. Then I'll adjust the color of the dancing footage to make my silhouette. And then technically I'll be able to duplicate that layer and isolate the white headphones and voila, a simple VFX shot. But as I started to edit, I realized I made a critical error. If you're an editor or you've tried doing your own visual effects, you'll know exactly what I did wrong. This suit is green and this wall is also green. Now they're not the same green, but they're pretty close. <laughs> Rookie move, Zach. See, I was optimistic that the AI could tell the difference between the green of my suit and the green of the background, but it cannot. It didn't matter what software I used, all of them struggled to create a clean cutout. And this whole commercial's vibe is built on that really clean silhouette. Oh man, we haven't even made it to the ear pods yet. I tried using a feature in After Effects called, uh, 
what is it called? Essentially, it's a tool that lets you fast track rotoscoping. But that too did not work. That green suit and that green wall was, uh, geez, son of a biscuit. I have no idea what I was thinking. The only way I can still use this footage is if I go through and manually cut myself out. It's 2023, man. There's got to be a way to use AI. Oh, man. Come on. Let's go film it again. And film it again, I did. I recorded myself dancing, but this time I wore plain dark clothes in front of a more simplified background. I also shot vertically to try and get some full body shots. Look at that man. Boy, can he dance. Let's cut this together. First, I separated myself out of the background using Keeper. Then I dropped the brightness and contrast to make a silhouette. I duplicated that layer and did my best to isolate just the white headphones. I messed around with a bunch of effects to try and get that clean separation. I got pretty close, but the headphones were starting to look really thin. I needed to find a way to make them stand out. And after just dragging a bunch of effects on, I stumbled across this comic filter. It essentially takes the highs and the lows and makes them a solid color. And you know what? This works pretty well. I cut the rest of the clips together to some classic royalty-free music. And I think it's looking pretty good. It's not perfect, but I think... I think this is gonna work. Watching it back, my only criticism is that there's a lot of me and it's very obviously me. Something you may have noticed in the original Apple commercial is dancers with longer hair. As you can see, I do not have long hair, but I really think someone with longer hair in that silhouette will really help sell this commercial. Who do I know with long hair? I mean, let's look at the camera. <laughs> <laughs> this is my sister. Hi. We look almost the same. You just have longer hair. And I'm shorter. Whoa, it's chunky. Um, Is this because you know that I have great dance skills? You definitely are the better dancer <laughs> of the two of us. Let's do this. Oh, gosh. And so to really sell this commercial, I put my sister Hannah through the same grueling task of having to dance impeccably to some royalty-free music. At first, she was a bit nervous, but we got there in the end. I edited my sister's dancing footage the same way I did my own, and I think we have everything we need to recreate this commercial. It's time for the last step, the premiere. Let's see how my remake stacks up against Apple's iconic commercial. Oh, okay, okay. Who's <laughs> Katty? Obviously, here we go. Mm -hmm. First up, Apple. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. Good job. It does look pretty good. The $200 for iPod wasn't a waste. <laughs> yeah, look, the results aren't perfect. <laughs> Even with the re-recorded dancing, I still had such a hard time separating the background from myself and the headphones. And an even harder time with the footage of Hannah and her hair. Honestly, for most situations, AI works great. But if I've learned anything from this experiment, it's don't buy a green morph suit. It's probably not worth it.